Bruchem Aboyim. Welcome everyone to our house. Thank you for coming. Um, this week, on my thoughts, I would like to examine the concept of appreciation. You know, the last time we got together on my thoughts, I mentioned about the concept of expect nothing and appreciate everything. In that thought, we discussed the idea that for a person to be truly happy, one should expect nothing. This week, I would like to discuss the concept of appreciating everything. Now, the word appreciate is taken from the Latin word appropitidius, meaning to esteem or value highly, or to just set a price to. However, in Hebrew, when one wants to show their appreciation for something, we refer to it as hakar sato, a recognition of good, a deeper expression of gratitude than just saying thank you. As I mentioned in my previous thought, if you truly expect nothing, then whatever you do receive is more valued. This thought connects with the fact that we are referred to as Jews. Now the word Jew is derived from the Hebrew word Yehuda, which is taken from the Hebrew word Hoda, meaning thank you. We read in the portion of Vayetze that it was known to Yaakov Avinu, Jacob our father's wives, that he would sire 12 sons. He was married to four women. And so it was assumed that each one of his wives would give birth to three of his sons. Leah was the first of his wives to give birth. She gave birth to three sons, Reuven, Shimon, and Levi. She was thrilled. Actually, that she had fulfilled her quota. She felt certain that she would bear no more children to her husband, Yaakov. Well, but then she did give birth to a fourth son. She named him Yehuda, as the expression of gratitude to God Almighty. She said, Hapam Ode Es Hashem. This time, let me praise God. She never expected that she would be blessed with a fourth son, and so she praised God. She had expected nothing, and by naming her fourth son Yehuda, she expressed her gratitude as a sign that she appreciated everything. Yosef had dreams of grandeur. Uh, his high expectations are really what caused him to be sold as a slave to Egypt. Well, things went from bad to worse, and he was then incarcerated in a prison. Yet nowhere, nowhere do we read that he expected that the day would come when he would be elevated to the position of viceroy of Egypt. He performed whatever duties he was given in whatever capacity he found himself. He expected nothing and was rewarded with everything, whether he was a slave, a prisoner, or a viceroy of Egypt. His expectations never changed. He felt that he deserved nothing, and he was grateful to God Almighty for all that he was given. You know, maybe the greatest example of appreciating everything can be learned from Moshe Rabbeinu, Moses, our teacher. We read in the Torah in the book of Exodus in the portion of Vayera, in reference to the ten plagues that God Almighty brought on the Egyptians. God commanded Moshe to instruct Aaron, his brother, to take his staff and strike the water. With that action, Aaron would turn all the water in Egypt into blood. Now, now the question that the commentaries ask is, why was, it, why was it that Aaron introduced the first three plagues? Why not Moshe? Rashi commenting in verse 19 answers, Since the Nile had offered protection to Moshe when he was cast into its waters, therefore he would not strike it with his hand, neither with the plague of blood, nor with the plague of frogs. We also read in the same portion that God instructed Moshe to tell Aaron once again to stretch out his staff and strike the earth, and that the earth would become lice. Rashi commenting on this verse states, that the dust of the earth was not deserving that it should be struck by the hands of Moshe. After all, it was protected him when he killed the Egyptian taskmaster. It had concealed the dead body in the sand. Therefore, the earth was struck by Aaron and not by Moshe. We learn a great lesson from Moshe, not just about demonstrating appreciation for a favor that someone has performed for you in the past. We learn much more. The question that we have to ask is, just how long are we expected to show our appreciation 
for any kindness that someone or something has performed for our benefit. Moshe was three months old when his sister Miriam placed his basket into the Nile. At the time that he led the children of Israel out of Egypt, he was then 80 years old. Eighty years that had transpired between these two events. There are different opinions as to how old Moshe was when he killed the Egyptian taskmaster. Some say that he was 13 years old. Others say he was 30. But in either case, it had to be at least 50 years since the land had extended its kindness towards him. So the kindness extended to him by the water occurred 80 years prior to his bringing the plagues on Egypt. And the land had buried the Egyptian taskmaster at least 50 years prior. Yet, we read that Moshe refrained from striking either the water or the land. So in answer to the question of how long is one indebted to someone or something for a kindness that they have extended to you, the answer that we learn from Moshe is forever. But there may be even a greater lesson of appreciation than we learn from Moshe's refusal to strike the water of the land. If you think about it, what did the water of the land really do for Moshe? They did not go out of the way to help him, nor did they change their nature in any way. They just performed that which both water and land were created to do. Nonetheless, Moshe would not strike either on Korosato, an expression of appreciation. From Moshe, we learn an important lesson in appreciation. Being grateful is not limited to go that for favors that go over and above that which we expected. Even if someone has performed a service for you that they are paid to perform, such as a doorman, a bus driver, a waitress, or a mail person, we still need to acknowledge their kindness and demonstrate an appreciation for their action. There is no act, there is no act that is so small or insignificant that it doesn't warrant recognition. So once a person has extended a kindness to you, well, you are indebted to that person for life. We also read in the book of Shmuel, Samuel, with the story of Hannah, who was the mother of Shmuel Hanabi, Samuel the prophet. Hannah had been barren for many years, and she felt that she would never bear any children to her husband. So in her deep despair, she went to the tabernacle of Chilo, and there it states the Hannah, he, the Daberis El Libo, that she poured out her heart to God Almighty. She asked him that he should bless her with a child, and in his great compassion, God answered her prayer in the affirmative. She was blessed with not only a child, hmm, but a very special child, as we recite, recite in Psalm 99 6, that Shmuel, Samuel, was as great as Moshe and Aaron combined. So how does she express her appreciation to God Almighty? She had vowed to God Almighty that he would bless her with a son. That unisativ lashem kol yemei chayu. That I shall give him to God all the days of my life, pardon me, of his life. So after only two years, when she had weaned her beloved son Shmuel, Hannah took him and gave him over to Eli the Kohen, the high priest, the, high, the Kohen Gadol. It was her gift of appreciation, the fulfillment of her vow that her precious son would attend to God as a servant for life. Which actually he did. We see that Shmuel served God Almighty for 50 years until his death at the age of 52. He was one of the greatest judges and prophets to ever preside over the children of Israel. You know, when we view the life of Dovin Amela, King David, we witnessed someone who truly expected nothing and appreciated everything. He began, his, he began his life as an outcast. He spent his early years in the fields, shepherding his father's sheep. When Shmuel Hanavi, when Samuel the prophet, came to Yishai's house on the command of God to anoint the king from amongst one of his sons, David was not even invited to attend. He expected nothing. But because of his great humility, God Almighty elevated him to the highest office. As David states in Psalm 131.1, Eni, Enai, Velohi, Hilakti, 
the gedolos and the flows be many. I did not put my striving in things that were too great or too remote from me. Yet he began the dynasty of the kings of Yehuda. In addition, he was also chosen to be the progenitor of the Messiah. May he come quickly and in our time. Now, if this is true of people, then imagine how much more so should we view our relationship with God Almighty in somewhat the same light. When we thank God, we need to do so in the manner that He has requested. We do not have the permission to innovate. God Almighty owes us nothing. Everything we have, everything that we are, everything we own is a gift from God Almighty. Somehow many of us have complaints. Hmm. We feel that God is not quite doing His part. You know, We may feel that even though we are blessed, but still, God's blessings have not reached all of our expectations. However, if we examine our perspective, we may find that the problem with, that we perceive is not with God. The problem is with our expectations. They are many times much greater than we deserve. But just maybe, if we were to acknowledge all that God does for us and appreciate all the blessings that we have been given, well, then we may well, he may well shower us with blessings that have no end, an expression of true appreciation. You know, I would like to end this, my thought, with a story that I've told before, but I think it's worthwhile repeating once again. The main character of this story is our Dr. Chonet Chaim Howie Leibowitz. He is a graduate of Harvard Medical School, where he later taught. He divided his time between Boston and Yerushalayim. Today, he is an internist practicing in Lakewood, New Jersey. You know, he began his religious studies in the yeshiva of Eish HaTorah in Yerushalayim. There, he became inspired by the brilliance and guidance of its Rosh HaYeshiva, the head of the academy, Rav Noach Weinberg. He later served as a teacher at Eish, participating in their discovery program. He told the story that had happened to him years before. He was serving as a senior resident in Brigham and Women's Hospital in Boston, where he was in charge of the ER, the emergency room. One afternoon, as he was making his rounds, he heard on the loudspeaker, Code Blue, which indicated that there was a life-threatening emergency. It seemed that a woman had suffered a severe heart attack in the cafeteria, and she was in cardiac arrest. He grabbed his equipment and raced to the cafeteria. When he got there, he found a team of doctors working frantically, trying to save the woman's life. He asked one of the doctors who was kneeling beside the woman, how's she doing? The doctor just shook his head. He said, I'm afraid that it's too late. We've been working on her for a while now, and there is just no response. Dr. Leibowitz said, you know what, let me try. So he inserted an intravenous catheter directly into her heart to prevent any blood clot to her coronary arteries. Then using a defibrillator, he applied an electric shock to jumpstart her heart into a normal rhythm. He tried again and again, but he was unsuccessful. The other doctors began to leave, shaking their heads in disappointment. He, however, did not give up a fourth time, and then a fifth time. But still, no heartbeat. You know, he thought he should just try it one more time, and it was then that he saw a razor-thin line appear on the heart monitor. He had a heartbeat. He ordered the medics to transfer her immediately to the ICU for treatment and observation. Well, he returned to the emergency room, but he would call up to the ICU unit for updates on the woman's condition. Now, he can debated with himself as to whether to visit her or not. After all, she really wasn't his patient. She certainly wouldn't recognize him, and he wasn't really looking for a thank you. You know, but the more he, he thought about it, the more he decided, you know, he really should visit her. He had noticed that her last name was Kelly, which he assumed meant that she wasn't Jewish. His name, Leibowitz, of course, was unmistakably Jewish. So he thought that if he were to visit her, she would realize that he was a Jewish doctor and it was a Jewish doctor who had saved her life, which would create a Kiddush Hashem, a sanctification of God's name. And so he went to visit her. When he entered her hospital room, 
there was a man sitting on the edge of her bed. When the man saw him, he quickly jumped up and he pointed to Dr. Leibowitz. He then turned to his wife and said, he's the one who saved your life. He's the one that I've been telling you about. Well, Dr. Leibowitz asked the man who he was and how he knew who he was. The husband replied that he had been forced to exit the cafeteria, but that he was able to view everything to a glass wall. The wife had been crying throughout their conversation. She was finally able to compose herself. She looked at Dr. Leibowitz, and she began to speak. What do I say? Thank you? Hmm. Thank you is something that you say to someone who has opened a door for you, not to someone who has given you back your life. I will tell you this, that when I go home and I see my children, well, I'll remember you, and I will say, thank you, Dr. Leibowitz. And a week from now, when I take a walk with my husband, I will think of you and say, thank you, Dr. Leibowitz. The next time that I go out with my friends, I will think of you and I will say, thank you, Dr. Leibowitz. And the next time I have a birthday, I'll remember you and I will say, thank you, Dr. Leibowitz. Now, as you can imagine, he was deeply moved. As he left the hospital room, he said to himself, when I come home tonight and I see my wife and my children, I'm going to say, thank you, Hashem. And the next time I pray, and I feel a connection with God Almighty, I will say, thank you, Rev. Noah Weinberg. And the next time that I learn some Chumash, I will say, thank you, Rev. Noah Weinberg. And the next time that I walk up a flight of stairs, and that I don't get out of breath, I will say, thank you, Hashem, for all of your many blessings. Dr. Leibowitz returned to the emergency room, a humbler person filled with appreciation. You know, let us all take a step back and realize just how much we owe to God Almighty, our Father in Heaven. Let us always remember that He owes us nothing. It is He, pardon me, it is we who are indebted to Him for everything. As the Rebbe Menachem Mandel Schneerson of Blessed Memory stated, there is no place for a man to think that he has given something to God Almighty and that God is now somehow obligated to repay his good deed. Rather, let him realize everything we request from God Almighty must be presented with the attitude that he is giving us a free gift. Let us all express our experience, our feelings, excuse me, of appreciation to God Almighty, not just in thought, but also in action. Thanking God Almighty constantly with all the, for all the goodness and blessings that he bestows upon us daily. And with that, let us help to usher in the coming of Shia Tsukainu quickly and in our time. Again, let me thank you for attending. Um, and God should bless you. Again, with the ability to see that if you expect nothing and you appreciate everything, success is just around the corner. We have to put that in our minds all the time, even for good things. And with that, let me wish you again a good week, a happy week, a healthy week, a successful week, and a Shabbat Shalom. And thank you much for listening. God bless and be well. There will be a musical portion that will follow this shortly. Thank you.